Hi guys, Kevlar here. Today we are going to be looking at the recommended PC specs for God of War Ragnarok. So God of War Ragnarok is coming to PC on the 19th of September 2024 and the system requirements have just been released on Steam. They have the minimum and recommended requirements. Really we're going to focus on the three main components, the processor, memory and graphics. The rest of it doesn't really change between the two different specs and they don't really have a huge impact. So you've got the operating system of Windows 10 and then they've got additional notes down here saying Windows version 2004-2020-05-27-19041. Basically this is the Windows 10 update in May 2020, so 27th of May 2020. Then we have DirectX version 12 required and a storage space of 190 gigabytes of available space. So it's pretty large. So first of all, what does the minimum and recommended requirements really mean? So I would say that the minimum system requirements means that you need these specs to play this game at 720 to 1080p resolution at low to medium settings to get a smooth 30 to 60 FPS. Then recommended requirements, I'd say that this is what you need to play this game at 1080 to 1440p resolution to get a smooth 60 FPS at higher graphic settings. So looking at the memory or RAM requirements first, as this is the easiest to look at, they suggest 8GB of RAM for the minimum requirements and 16GB of RAM for the recommended. So already based on this, it tells me that this game isn't going to be super demanding and should be accessible to a lot of systems since the industry standard of buying or building your own PC these days is 16GB minimum with 32 gigabytes becoming more popular too. Since less than 16 gigs will struggle in a lot of modern games and won't really be very future proof. But these specs suggest eight gigabytes is okay for this game. I guess since this game has been out on console for some time, so it's not like it's a brand new title for PC and it's likely to be well optimized on the PC. Looking at the graphics card, you've got the minimum requirements of an NVIDIA GTX 1060 6 gigabytes. This is quite key because there is a 3 gigabyte VRAM version of the 1060 and that lower VRAM won't quite cut it so you do need the 6 gigabyte version. And then we've got the AMD RX 550 XT. Again they've put 8 gigabytes in brackets because it is a 4 gigabyte version of this graphics card and again 4 gigabytes of VRAM won't be enough. And then we've got the Intel Arc A750. They haven't mentioned the VRAM here because there is only an 8GB version of this card. It's quite nice to see an Intel GPU on the list here because I haven't actually seen before any of these system requirements on Steam mentioning Intel cards before. I'm sure it has been, but I haven't seen it yet. However, I don't think they've got these Intel GPUs quite right on this. We'll explain more when we dive deeper into the GPUs. And then for the recommended specs, you've got the NVIDIA RTX 2060 Super, the AMD RX 5 700, or the Intel Arc A770. There's no mention of VRAM again here, the 2060 Super and the RX 5 700. Both only come in 8GB versions, whereas the Arc A770 starts at 8GB, but there is also a 16GB version. Either will obviously be fine. So in general, it does seem that 6GB of VRAM is the minimum and 8 or more is recommended. I'm quite pleased with these recommended specs. Kind of expected them to be a little bit higher. Ignoring the uh, Intel GPU, as Intel is generally newer to the market, the AMD and Nvidia options here are both from 2019. They're released in 2019. So they're available at pretty good prices on the second hand market. So making these recommended specs for this game quite accessible. The best way to understand what this means and where your cards sit within this range is on the Tech Power Up website. They have a great tool here, the GPU Specs Database, where you can select your graphics card and see where it sits in relative performance to other cards. So here we're going to search for the 2060 Super as the recommended GPU. Select that one and we can see here in relative performance it's sitting there at 100%. And if we scroll up a little bit, we can see the other recommended card, the RX 5700, is at 93%. And down here, we see the Intel Arc here, the A770 at 115%. So actually, that's quite a higher performing card than the other two recommended specs. Interestingly, there is another Arc card in between and closer to the 2060 Super, the Arc A750, which is actually the card they put in the minimum required specifications, which is why I don't quite think they've got these right for the Intel 
recommended specs because clearly these cards are quite close together in in the naming the a750 and a770 so without knowing too much about the intel cards or having tested them i'm fairly confident that this tech radar website is accurate so i'm trusting this and not trusting the recommended specs on steam so i'll definitely take what they've put in there regarding intel with a pinch of salt so obviously if you've got a graphics card around this area or above then you're good for the recommended specs so if we go further down the list to try and find the GPUs in the minimum specs, we can see the 1066 gigabyte and the RX 5500 sitting here at 56 and 57%. So that suggests these are 43 to 44% lower performing than that RTX 2060 Super that we put in as our benchmark GPU. So anything in between those two, so from the 56% and up, you'll obviously be good for minimum specs and then the higher up the list they are getting closer to the recommended specs will mean you'll be able to higher your graphics settings a little bit then obviously anything above the 100 percent then you'll be golden for the recommended specs so back to the specs and we got the processors next for the minimum specs we've got the intel i5 4670k and the amd ryzen 3 1 200 and then the recommended specs we've got the intel i5 8 600 or the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. Again, these are really not very high spec components here. I mean, the Ryzen 3 1200, I have one sitting here in my office that I haven't even bothered to sell because it's not worth my effort. Here's some proof. So you know what? If you want it and you're based in the UK, just subscribe to the channel, drop me a YouTube super thanks on this video with any value of your choice, drop a comment and I'll be in touch for you to get your details to ship it over to you. It will go to the first person to send a super thanks and as long as you're based in the UK because I won't ship abroad. So make sure you only do that if you're in the UK. Don't waste your money and give me a super thanks if you're from elsewhere. So yeah, it'll go to the first person to do that super thanks. Once it's all done, I'll do a YouTube short just showing who was the first just to prove that I'm sending it to the first person. So without getting too technical on all the cores and threads and clock speeds of a CPU, let's just go to another website. So first of all, we're going to the Tom's Hardware website and on here they have CPU benchmark hierarchies. There's a 2024 hierarchy, which is the first one you'll come to. However, as these CPUs are quite old, they have dropped off of that list. So they do have a legacy hierarchy here. So we're going to go to this one. I'm going to scroll down to this graph here. Even still, the minimum spec CPUs are even off the bottom of this list. But we can see here the recommended spec ones. So the Ryzen 5 3600, then they've got the i5-8600K. So again, this will just help you see if your CPU is above those, then obviously you're golden for the recommended specs. If it's below, then you're good for the, you know, between minimum to the recommended. As this graph isn't great, hasn't got every single CPU on it, there's another place I like to go or another method. So if you head over to Google and basically just search for your CPU versus one of those minimum or recommended spec CPUs. So let's say you've got the Ryzen 5 2600 and we want to compare it to the minimum spec Ryzen 3 1200. Just search for it in Google and usually the first website that comes up is this user benchmark website. So if we click on that, this will give you a comparison between the two CPUs. So I tend to use this effective speed stats and we can see here that the Ryzen 5 2600 is 29% better performing than the Ryzen 3 1200. So obviously if you've got this CPU, then you are higher than the minimum requirements. But then you might want to compare, see where you stand against the recommended specs. So we can change here to the Ryzen 5 3600, which is the recommended spec CPU. So we're now comparing those two and if we go down here, effective speed again, we can see that the Ryzen 5 3600 is 13% better performing than the Ryzen 5 2600. So you're not quite at the recommended specs, but you're definitely better than the minimum specs. So this website isn't a perfect science. I think it is based on user inputs. But it's definitely a really good guide. So you can always search for your CPU, compare it against one of the minimum or recommended spec CPUs and see where you land. Right, back to the spec lists and we've covered them all. So that's it from me. I hope you found that useful. So if you do get this game, it'll be interesting and useful for the viewers to know how it performs on your specs. Sometimes these recommendations on Steam aren't always super accurate. So do drop us a comment, let us know what your specs are and how it performs for you. So thanks for watching. Please do give us a like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.